Hello newbies, welcome to my new video. In today's video, we are going to hack performing CSRF exploits over GraphQL Lab in Web Security Academy and powered by Portswigger. So in this lab, there is a user management function that is powered by GraphQL endpoint and we need to convert this GraphQL endpoint to API request to make CSRF attack. So we will see how to convert GraphQL endpoint to make CSRF attack. So we are going to create an HTML file that contains this CSRF attack and then send it to our target via an email. So we will use our credential of winner Peter and it recommends us to use NQL extension. So definitely I'm not gonna use it, but if you want to know how to install an NQL extension and how to use it, please watch my first video and you will find the link in the description below. But before we start guys, as you can recognize that I'm using a professional edition for this lab, but if you don't have professional edition, this is absolutely normal because I'm going to show you how to create CSRF attack manually using code editor. So guys, without further ado, let's go and hack. And here we go guys. So first, let me mapping the application. So let me go to my account. Then let me use my credential of winner. Then let's say password of Peter. Let me connect and here we go. So now I'm using my account and one of the requirements to use a CSRF attack that we are going to send the link to our target to change something in his account. So definitely we have to be connected. So it's basic for our target session. So as you can see guys, I have a cookie caller session and I have this unique value. So this is a value that identify me in application that I'm a winner user. So I need the target to be connected and have this section ID and base it on his section, I will make the attack. So here we go, guys. So let me enter Foxy Proxy. Let's go, I'm using Perpsuit Pro. And now let's go to Proxy, double click to enter set button and let's go to HTTP history. So I know that the vulnerability that I'm going to exploit using update function. So I'm going to change my email. So let me say popo at hack.com and let me change my email. And here we go, guys. So this is the request. And as you can see, my email changed it in here. But um, in this case, we have a GraphQL endpoint. And one of other requirements of the CSRF attack that should be using a request API because CSRF attack is based of the client side attack. So that's why we are going to use an HTML to send this attack. And in case that we are going to use HTML, so we cannot base our attack using GraphQL or it's gonna be very complicated. So in this case, let me send the request to repeater and let me try to convert it to request API. So first let me uh, resend the request and see the output. And here we go. So I got an application, JSON. So the response is absolutely JSON because I'm using GraphQL. And now let me see the query and here we go. So this is the query. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to resend it to repeater again. So I will have this one. And here you go, I'm open a new tab. And now I'm going to change content type and let me change the JSON of X www form that URL encoded. You can do it manually or just right click and then change the request twice because the first one is going to be get and then it's going to be post. So I need it as a post. And now, as you can see guys, let me scroll down. So now let me try to send again and check. And here we go. This is the very good sign that I changed the request. So the query not present. And this is absolutely normal because I changed the content type. So what I'm going to try now, I'm going to change this format to URL encoded. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select it and I'm going to my code editor. Let me create a new file and let me say edit 
dot json so uh, just the json so we can see it clearly what i'm going to do i'm going to remove this slash n so i'm going to use uh, ctrl h then replace with empty and then praise for all of them and now let me replace this space because i don't need it ctrl h again and let me replace it and here we go so in case that this is a form URL code i'm going to remove as a json and let me separate it by one so this is the first method and this is the second so i do have three of them we have a query operation name and variables so what i'm going to do i'm going to remove the double quotes the double quotes of here and also the double quotes in here and the double quotes in here and also the double quotes for this one so in case that uh, it's not a json i'm going to replace a double point by equal double point by equal and double point by equal and also i'm going to replace the comma with end and here we go and now is mutation and there is a space in here so in case that i'm using url encoded i'm going to use percentage 20 as a space so and then let me remove this extra spaces And here we go guys so let me copy it and now let me paste it in here and as you can see guys now it accepted and let me try so let me change the popo with popo123 of email let me just close this one and let's see it in here and let's send and here we go guys now we successfully change the email so whenever i refresh right now and here we go so it works very good so now we successfully convert the graphql api to a request api so what i'm going to do now i'm going to create csrf attack so we have two methods if we are using a professional edition we have a tool uh, call it engagement tools and we can just generate csrf puc like this so if you are using professional edition you have this option so if you don't if you're using a community edition let's close this one and let's create csrf attack together let's go to code editor let me remove this one i don't need i don't need it anymore and let me create a new html file so let's say index.html so let's say html so in case that this is a form so this is absolutely a form and here we go so it's going to include uh, these three inputs i'm going to create input then type equal hidden and then name and then we'll contain the value and here we go now let me close it so in case I have a three of them, I'm going to copy paste it. And what I really need now, I need a script. So whenever the user is going to open this file, this script will be working automatically. So let's create it together. So in the form, we have two attributes. One of them call it action. So in the action, we need to use the URL target. So this is it so this is the url target so let's say https two points double slash let me paste the url and now let me copy the endpoint and let me add it in here and here we go so now what i'm going to add i'm going to add the method and this is the post method so let me copy it and let's say method equal to post and be careful guys the post should be a capital case and here we go so now let's go to the inputs uh, let me say query and now in case that i'm using html i'm going to encode it as an html code so let's copy this one let's back to decoder let me paste it 
And in case that I'm using URL encode in here, let me just replace it with a space and let me encode it with the HTML. And here we go. Let me copy all of it and let me paste it in here. So it will be looked like this. And let me back to repeater now. Let me take operation name. Let me replace it in here. And let me take the change name. So in case that there isn't any specific characters in here, I can just put it like this. I don't need to change it. And now we do have a variables. Let's say variables. And let me take this value and let me encode it. Let me select and replace. And here we go. Now let me pay. Now the format is ready. All what I have to do now, let me write the script. So let's say document dot forms zero. So this is going to take this format by default. And then I'm going to use a function, call it submit function. And here we go, guys. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to test it to my account. So let me change the popo name and let's say popo dash ha 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 ha. And here we go. Let me copy this one and let me replace it in here. So I'm going to use it to my own. So let me open live server and let's see. And here we go, guys. Now it changed it. So I get the response that something is a change it. Let me go to my account. Let me refresh. And here we go. Now my email changed it. So this is the basic of the attack. So whenever the user is going to open this HTML file, he will be definitely change his email. And whenever he change his email, I will be able to change his username, his password. I can get access to his account. So this is the basic of the CSRF attack. So first, let me back to my code editor. Let me select this HTML code. Let me close it. And now let me go to exploit server. And here we go, guys. So now I'm going to send this HTML file to the target. So now let me paste it in here and let me store it. And here we go. Now it's save it and let me deliver it to the victim. And here we go, guys. We finally solved this lab successfully. So just a note, guys, if this is didn't work for you, it means you have to change your email because in the real life, the reason two accounts have the same email. So all what you have to do, guys, is to use a unique email for your attack. And here we go, guys. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the next video.